Hello, my name is Josh Randall, aka Robot Kid. Um, I am originally from Boston. I'm out here in sunny California. Uh, just moved out here about a week ago, and um, and uh, I'm having fun. Um, I, uh, you know, I've been sort of making video games for the past 18 years. I, uh, <laughs> most recently I was the creative director at uh, Harmonix Music in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, there I worked on games like starting with um, Frequency and Amplitude, um, uh, iToy Antigrav. Karaoke Revolution. Uh, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, all the rock bands. And then I was a project leader. Um, and creative director for the Beatles rock band, which mm -hmm. is cool. And then after that, I did an app called uh, VidRhythm, which allows you to sort of remix your own, uh, make your own video mashups on the iPad and iPhone. Yeah, why don't we uh, start with the, the bass drum. So what I'm going to do is it's going to hit this red blinking button here. Boom. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, let's record some of our other samples and see what we get. Boom. Yow. <laughs> Select Make Video Music and let's check out your vid rhythm. It's been out for just about under a year now on the iTunes store, and it's gotten over one million downloads. Yeah. And um, yeah, now uh, I'm just kind of hanging out, taking some time off. Before Harmonix, I worked at a company called uh, Looking Glass uh, Studios. I started there in 1999. Uh, and when I started, I, um, I uh, basically was, I went to art school uh, and studied film and video and some computer graphics and things there. And then uh, after that, I uh, wanted to basically get a job like making music. And so I was doing music for about a summer and then I was kind of running out of money. So I was like, um, oh, what can I do? And I looked in the paper and there was an ad in the paper that was like, uh, wanted people who play video games. We'll give you $10 an hour to play video games. And I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. So I, um, I basically started working at, at Looking Glass and I was a play tester, so that meant that I would test the, the games. And the first game I was working on was called Flight Unlimited. Um, first one. First one, yeah. Uh, Flight Unlimited 1. And, um, and so I would basically just play the game where I'd be like flying this. Uh... There we go. Be like flying. And basically, just trying to like crash the plane, like as creatively as I could, just like. And um, so, then after that, I um, kind of I, I realized like oh, I'm not that great of like a tester guy. So, but I'm like, oh, I know how to do film, and I know how to video, do video, like. Um, you know, why not, uh, maybe I could help do some other stuff. So they started giving me opportunities making like um, 
doing Photoshop and doing sound. And I started to sort of like rise up through the ranks. So they started giving me more opportunities because they were really cool. And um, I met, uh, you know, Eric Brocious there and uh, this guy, Greg Piccolo, that um, we became fast friends. And Greg has sort of been my mentor my entire uh, career. And so Greg did the uh, music for System Shock 1. he was running the audiovisual department at, at Looking Glass. So he was creating, uh, you know, sort of managing the sound for all the games and the music. And then also uh, working to create uh, videos, like trailers and, and things that we could post on the internet and also make websites and things like that. And so I started to work under Greg uh, doing that sort of stuff. And that's where I learned digital editing and uh, digital video editing. And then, um, I started working on a game called Terra Nova, um, and that had that was like a science fiction, like space game, and it had lots of videos. Uh, because at that time, there's another game that came out called Wing Commander, and it was really popular. And Wing Commander had lots of like videos that you could watch while you were playing the game, and so we were like, oh, we need videos. So then we made. We rented a green screen studio and started to shoot all these videos. And so it was my job to edit the videos and um, chroma key them and things like that. And, um, yeah, and then after a while, uh, I started to make music there. And uh, I did some music uh, and acting for, uh, for Thief, the Dark Project. And I was the producer on that game. <laughs> Is that you, Kevil? Uh, and then afterwards, uh, after Thief, I was the producer on System Shock 2. And so System Shock 2 was done with, uh, it was sort of a, it was done with Irrational Games, but they were actually housed inside of Looking Glass. So Irrational Games was actually in an office inside of Looking Glass, the next door down for me. The use of, of the game, what it consists of? Uh, so if you're the producer, uh, a lot of times what your job is like, you're kind of um, dealing with a lot of people that are outside of the company. So you're working with, uh, you know, for Thief, I was working a lot with some of the folks from IDOS. And then uh, for System Shock 2, I was working with the, the folks from Electronic Arts. Mm -hmm. And basically just working on like, okay, what's the packaging gonna look like? What's the marketing campaign gonna be like? And then dealing with the localization. So making sure that it uh, there's voice for, you know, and, it, you know, French and German and Spanish and all that sort of stuff. And then also just sort of working with, uh, you know, the Irrational team to make sure that, like, they were hitting their deadlines and they were on budget and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And a little bit about these games, uh, System Shock and Sith. Uh, do you remember something interesting <laughs> in the process of making these games? Uh, sure. Um, uh, it's like, it's kind of a long time ago now, but it's funny, like, um, well, for Thief, we, uh, I remember that we were working really hard on this sort of, uh, 
2D graphics uh, moving in 3D space uh, using After Effects for all the movies. So like the movies for Thief, I was sort of the uh, the producer for those. And so I uh, was working with this guy Dan Thron on making all the on all the videos and we sort of realized that like, oh, well we can do a lot of stuff just manipulating still images and animating them in After Effects, but we can also, if we shoot video of ourselves in silhouette, we can composite ourselves into those videos and make it look like it's more interesting, you know? And so we kept on doing that and I would like put on like a hood <laughs> and be like, like walking around and then I'd give that footage to Dan and then he would just do this amazing thing where he would cut it up and stick it into the movie and it would look beautiful, you know? And then, so we kept on doing that over and over and then finally we had to make the art for the box, I remember. And we only had like one day to do it or something. And like, so Dan and I stayed up like really, really late, like putting it together and stuff. And then what he did was he basically like took a picture of my face, uh -huh. at, like going like that. And then I became like the face of Thief. So it's my face so on, the, on the box, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really crazy. <laughs> um, and you made, then, you said you made some music for this game. For Thief? Yes. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I did um, not too much. I, I started to like, well, so Eric Brocious was kind of, he was like, a, he was really into using like um, digital equipment, mm -hmm. uh, but he's more of a guitar player and, he, and he's more of a rock guy. And, mm -hmm. and so he doesn't, doesn't have a whole lot of experience making electronic music. And I was really into electronica. And so I was constantly playing him like, hey, this, this song's really cool, we should, you know. And so I played him a song by DJ Shadow that inspired like the main theme song for, for Thief that you hear, there's a certain part in the game, I think you would hear it in the trailers, but there's a certain part in the game where it's like, it's really crazy drums and stuff. Wonderful. Yeah, and so, um, so we listened to a lot of DJ Shadow then, and we're like, oh, we want to do something like this where it's like sampling from, all these really crazy drums, you know. <laughs> Making the music for System Shock 2 was interesting because it was really like uh, there's myself uh, and there's another guy. Um, uh, yes, uh, and um, and then another guy, uh, uh, Kamal, who was doing like sound effects and stuff. <laughs> and um, and it was really like uh, Eric was like, oh well, you know, uh, I need to do the music now. There's not a lot of time left. Do you want to? Do you have any like sounds or anything you can give me to do more of like electronic music stuff? I'm like, oh, well, I can work on, I can make some stuff, you know? And so I made these like, I think maybe like six or eight, this sort of what I thought were gonna just be demos, you know? Mm -hmm. So they were like, I would make them over the course of a few nights uh, and I'd save them onto a hard drive. I think I was using like a jazz drive at that time because it was 1990 eight or 99 or something. And um, I would bring them in to Eric and he had a Pro Tools system and he would, uh, you know, basically take what I made and like chopped it up mm -hmm. and put it. And so, but I, for some reason I thought that like, I was gonna make something and then he was gonna really take what I did and really change it up. And then it would turn into the final thing. But it was really like, I made these demos and he like sliced them and then put them in the game. Uh -huh. and And now they're, they are what they are, but I always thought that they weren't done. You know, I just thought they were like sketches, but somehow he chopped them up in a way that sounded like they were complete, which is cool because he's good at what he does. <laughs> it's still cool because music dynamically changes. If you are in some action, it's like, like 
our music is yeah. if you go outside of this section it's music yeah yeah and mm-hmm. that was all eric so eric was like uh actually like using the engine uh-huh. going into the engine and sort of figuring out where like if you crossed through certain areas uh it would start to trigger the action music or then if you backed away you know it would um get quiet again and so mm-hmm. um yeah so he's he's the master of the interactive score Do you remember I, you uh, was a, a little bit, bit of voice acting in System Shock? You said uh, one phrase. Uh, actually, the first dead body you found in, in the game, he has uh, a code number 45100, <laughs> and it was you. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Great. I'm gonna change the access codes out of Cryo A again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Grassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. I remember I did, I remember that I tried out for doing a few different voices mm-hmm. and I was so bad that I think they were like, yeah, let's not use Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I think, but now that you reminded me, I think that I, I do remember that they use like one or two yes. things. Or maybe it's like it's like three or four lines or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so do it. So does my character like give you a passcode that you use to get into? Yes, oh, okay. the very first. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, the cool. First, first dead body. Nice, Sorry, I'm the first dead body, all right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll have to go back and I want to play it through again. Harmonics. How did they get there? Uh, how you joined the group? Oh, sure. How did I join Harmonics? So mm-hmm. I, um, right at the end of System Shock, I was very bored, <laughs> and I uh, and I was starting to not want to make uh, you know like games like that anymore, and so. Um, I basically, uh, Greg had been hired and he went over there and then, um, and he called me and he was like, hey, we're making like an electronic music game. Like we could really use your help. And I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. And so I came over and met the guys at Harmonix and I was like, oh, this is great. And then and they're like, well, we need you right now. You know, I'm like, well, System Shock 2 isn't done yet. You know, and they're like, well, we really need you. And I was like, I'm like, all right. Well, I'll I'll stay a few more, uh, like another month, and then I'm gonna I'll I'll join you guys. And so I actually left. I don't feel good about this, but I left before the end of System Shock 2 just because I needed to. I was just really done with. It was a hard System Shock 2 was like a really hard project, and there was a lot of uh, emotions going on, and uh, and I think that I was maybe just tired and I wanted to do something else, you know. Uh, 
Um, so I left. But I'm, I, I wish that I stayed to finish it. I, I only left about a month or two before it was done, but, but uh, I'm proud with how it turned out, but I'm really psyched that I started my career at Harmonix. You know, it's been, it was an amazing 13 years. Ready? Let's go. Oh. Okay, are you ready to go into the water? Yeah. Hell yeah. The Pacific Ocean. Alright, let's do it. On. A real ocean. <laughs> okay, let's get some pizza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. USA. USA. <laughs> How can you tell people who don't know what the VGN is, uh, what is it? Oh, sure. So, uh, yeah, so in my spare time, I'm like a VJ and a DJ. And so I guess what that means is I, I enjoy sort of uh, creating visuals that will accompany either like a DJ or a band or just sort of set the atmosphere for uh, like a party. And so what I like to do is I've got some uh, video software that allows me to sort of remix videos uh, on the fly, you know, like basically having lots of little QuickTime movies and dragging them in. And I can trigger them either by hitting the keyboard or I can map them to a MIDI controller. Um, and so uh, it's just fun to sort of collect all these like video clips and sort of present them in this remix form at, at parties and discos and things. Um, and so for a while I was uh, one of the resident DJs for this party in Boston called uh, Thunderdome. And we actually did a party completely in 3D using the old red and blue glasses, mm -hmm. which was a huge challenge. And um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool to see. The good thing was, it's like everyone was drunk. Mm -hmm. And um, it was fun to see the entire audience wearing like the glasses and kind of looking up and things like that. You know, that was fun. But uh, it's just incredibly hard to create 3d content and it's also incredibly hard to like then project 3d content in a way that people will, it will still be 3d mm -hmm. so um yeah so now i'm sort of like taking a break from that sort of stuff and trying to come up with like a new way of doing all that and i've actually been recently uh, have actually been teaching some classes about vjing and about video remixing and music remixing um and i'm trying to add sort of my video game background into those teachings where I'm actually adding a, an interactive component where people can actually, you know, use game controllers to trigger video clips and audio clips and, and things like that. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's fun. And a little bit about your old school band called IT. Oh, sure, okay. When I was at the Massachusetts College of Art, where I was studying you know, film and video, uh, I started a band called uh, the Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And so we were um, 
just really into old uh, sci-fi, like space films, and really into sort of uh, sort of like electronic dance music and into like early hip hop, and and also like into punk music. And so we sort of had like a punk aesthetic. Yeah, so we would wear uh, spacesuits when we performed, and we had robots on the side of the stage that would have televisions that would have all the uh, video fully synchronized to the music. And so um, when you watched, everything would be completely in sync. And then sometimes we would bring old Atari game systems, the Atari 2600, and hook them up to the robots. So when people were waiting for us to come on stage, they could actually play Atari on the, on the robots, which was fun. Um, and so we played around Boston, we played in, uh, in uh, New York, and, um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. But actually, we were one of the first bands on the internet, actually. So we were, uh, this is around 1994, 95, and our guitarist, he was the only guy I knew that had a job working on the internet. Whoa. And like at the time, I was like, oh, that's really weird, you know? And he's like, oh yeah, have you seen what you can do now? Like, because I was on the internet just going to different pages that would just be all text, you uh -huh. know? But he's like, yeah, you can actually put pictures and sounds there now. And I was like, whoa, that's really cool. So uh, we designed this thing called the HomeBot that was sort of similar to our robots that we had on stage. It would be this robot that had all the, could serve up different sounds and you could email us and you could do all this stuff. And, and um, we got a lot of attention for it. We got, uh, you know, we were written up in a book in Germany called music in das internet or something <laughs> and it has like a picture of our robot you know and uh but yeah so we were kind of like right at the very beginning of the of the internet <laughs> for that stuff Why a robot kid? So uh, I got the name Robot Kid uh, when I was building one of these robots, which were really not robots. They're just big piles of junk of things that we found that we put them together. But um, I built this robot that would react to sound. So it had a little box that would listen to sound and then make lights flash to uh -huh. sound or music. And I brought it to a friend's party and someone was like, they were looking for me, and someone was like, yeah, that robot kid over there or something. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then so it kind of stuck, and then I just started to use that. So and that was a long time ago. OK. Thank you, Russian fans. Keep on rocking. <laughs>